Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Okay, let's talk about Married to Medicine, Season 3, Episode 14. So they're still over in the Bahamas. And, um, you know, shit had just got real ugly and funky at the dinner and all of that stuff. And, you know what, the main, there's a lot that was going on with that damn Heavenly, this... Uh, episode, so I'm gonna like hold off on Heavenly and her bullshit, cause y'all know I don't do Heavenly Child, I don't do her, and she really got under my skin. But anyway, so I'm kind of bounce around, so just kind of follow with me here. Okay, so um, they did a medical mission, like it was a medical mission. They did an outreach program where they were checking sugar and blood pressure and all of that kind of stuff for some of the um, bohemians. And that was that was cool. I thought that was cool. We got to see them all work together and that whole thing. And I cracked up when uh, Quad brought the drama, honey, when she's like, you know, these people were so appreciative and whatnot. And then what do we do? Like, we don't do that. We just fight amongst each other for nothing. And then she had this little moment. I was like, okay, Lady Q, with the drama child. You know, she kills me. I just love her child. But um, I watched Quad through the whole episode. Quad and Dr. G had a good time, I believe, in the Bahamas. They literally were vacationing. They weren't, you know, just was not dealing with the bullshit. They were chilling and having a good time. And she basically stayed kind of to the back and just kind of, was watching them clowning and carrying on. And I was like, okay, that's good. Because the thing is, Quad is actually building a brand. I don't know, you know, you hear people saying this little shit about, oh, her and her little dog clothes and this, that thing. And they be talking shit. But y'all ain't even watching. The girl's building an empire. She's building a brand right up underneath your fucking nose. Just keep watching her. Keep watching her. And shit's going to be real in the field in a very short time. Just keep watching her. I'm watching you. I got my motherfucking good eye on you, goddamn it, Quad. And you doing the right thing. Fuck all that bullshit. The people that you're dealing with, you ain't got time for all this drama. You ain't got time to be, you know, ain't nobody going to invite you to their place if they think you're going to turn it out. She know what she's doing. Quad's a very smart woman. Very smart. But anyway, and I said, you know that bitch got some good motherfucking wigs. Because you see her wigs ain't puffing up. I was looking at folks' hair. Their hair was puffing the fuck up out there in that motherfucking beach. I said, ooh. Anyway. Um, let's see. Cecil and Simone vacationing. Having a good time. They are so silly. Every scene they show them in, they just look like they are literally having a fucking blast. And having a good time. So, you know, I love them, too. They're, like, one of my favorite couples. Um, Mariah should have stayed home. She should have stayed home. And then, after she made the decision to actually come, and then she realized that she's not really ready, she should have gone home. She should have gone home. She Because she's in a... She back in, in nasty. She's in this nasty place. Um, yeah, she's bitter as fuck about everything, and I think that she, yeah, she she's aggravating herself actually being there. She should have got on a plane and went on home. Yeah, she should went home because she's mad, and she was reading us uh, think like a man Steve Harvey's book, but that ain't helping. You're mad. You're mad at them. Mad. And a lot of the shit, you ain't got a reason to be mad. Because I don't give a fuck what you say. We got tons of footage. You were nasty as a motherfucker last season. Nasty. Absolutely nasty. All that, I'm not coming down off my chair. All that shit you said out your mouth, you can't take that shit back. That shit was rude and nasty. And you meant every fucking word of it. And you're mad. Now, Aiden... Aiden is happy to be around people. He's, um, had, you know, he got past his little shit. He's having a good time. He's just happy to be around some motherfucking people. So I was peeping at. Um, Jackie, you know, Jackie still has the whole thing going on with her dad and all of that. Daddy's sick. 
you know, he's, he's really, I hate to say, like in the last stages of Alzheimer and different things. And it's just, it's hard to watch, you know what I mean? Been there, done that with a family member of mine, but it's, it's hard to watch. And you see, you know, her going through that. But she was calling and stuff and checking with Keisha about her dad and stuff. So that's kind of hard to watch. But other than that, you you know, Jackie and her husband are trying to really enjoy themselves and different things. Um, so let's go on to the, 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 the fuck-ups. I got all the good stuff out the way. Let's go on to the fuck-ups. Toya and Eugene. Heavenly. And then Jill and John. Now, I like Jill and John. I told you I had to took a liking to Jill and John because Jill and John tickle the fuck out of me, okay? So, there's this one point where Heavenly took her big old ass down there to uh, Toya and Eugene's room. It's earlier in, in the episode. And, you know, uh, Heavenly's husband wasn't there yet. He actually hadn't come yet. And, uh, that bitch got the cackle and the kiki and stuff. I was down there like, you know, I, I miss my husband and my kids, but he, I was uh, enjoying myself, getting to know myself. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know good well this bitch ain't sitting on her telemess that she was fiddling with her Twitter, honey. We don't want to know that. We don't care. Oh, boxhead bitch. She's a mess. Just the thought of Heavenly over there playing with the little man in the, in the boat. Get on out of here, dirty fingers, bitch. Anyway, she go in there in the room like, what y'all doing? Child, that damn Toya and, and uh, Eugene wasn't doing shit. Eugene laying up there looking like Orca on that bed. I said, what in the... F if you don't get up, honey, if you don't get... Up, he, 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 he grimace. He's the best. I said, "Wow, Eugene." And he's laying there. He was like, "I ain't getting." He said something about, "I was never a fantasy of mine to have my wife and heavenly." I bet it wasn't yuck. Anyway, just crazy. So while all that's going on, Toya and Heavenly kind of start. I don't know what this thing they're trying to bond or whatever, but Heavenly steadily reads Toya all the time. So, it's just stupid because all in the confessionals, she makes you look like an ass. And then you're like trying to hang with her. And this is what I say. Now, Jill and Heavenly, it's just a battle. It's a clash of the fucking titans. Jill is never going to pipe down to Heavenly. And I am so motherfucking here for it. I am so here for it. Fuck Heavenly. Jill don't have to pipe down to Heavenly. And Heavenly can't win with Jill. That's what the problem is. She can't win with her. She keeps All she kept going back to, I don't have conversations with people who are not intelligent. I don't have conversations with people who are stupid. I don't have conversations with people who lie. Girl, you keep going back to the lie or misunderstanding or whatever it was about whether John said, fuck you to Damon and all that. But... You ain't one trying to move forward because you can't win. You can't win in the argument because Jill will talk circles around that motherfucking heavenly. Y'all better pay attention. Jill's not dumb. She's not dumb at all. And Lisa keeps trying to throw digs and blondie this and blondie that. Lisa, bitch, you're no scholar. You're no scholar. The fuck? Now, they did your timeline, bitch. You was in college. You fucking leached yourself onto that motherfucking uh, Wolfman Jack looking motherfucker that you're married to because that motherfucker was going to be a doctor, bitch. You were securing your future and you had a motherfucking baby before you got married. That's what I've gathered from the timeline. Bitch, you were securing your future, okay? So it didn't matter if he cheated. It didn't matter if he treated you like shit, bitch, because you, I'm marrying me a doctor, period. And before I marry him, I'm going to lock his ass in because I'm going to have this motherfucking baby. Bitch, we see you. We see you. And that's why now you got wife-in-laws, husband-in-laws, and everything else. You dealing with everything that you dealing with. You sold your motherfucking soul to the devil. So, I don't know where you think you so much better than Jill. 
But you're not even on Jill's level. You're really not. And I'm going to say this. There's an issue with Jill because, one, she's not dumb. So they want to keep on playing on the blonde thing, blonde thing, blonde thing. Jill not dumb. Y'all better pay attention to Jill. Jill got some shit with her, and she got something to say. She got Heavenly's motherfucking card in her pocket, and it's an ace of spades. You hear me? She said, just as nice. She said, um, cause, and then Toya made me mad. I have a girlfriend that does this. Always wanting to try to talk me down. Because you know I'm an old real motherfucker. You want to talk me down. And, and try to convince me to let motherfuckers run over me. No bitch, that's what you do. That's what you do. You allow motherfuckers to talk to you like your head screws on and off and sits on the shelf at night. That ain't me. That ain't me. I ain't never been obsessed with being the bigger person. I ain't never been obsessed with being the one that people think is nice. I don't give a fuck if you think I'm nice. Because I really ain't. I really ain't nice. If you fucking step cross me, bitch, I'm going to get you. Period. That's what I want you to know. If you fuck with me, bitch, I'm going to fuck you back. You ain't going to like it. So, I'm noticing Toya's doing a lot of that with Jill. She's trying to talk. Well, you know, Jill, you... Fuck heavenly. Fuck heavenly. Like she said, she's full of shit. She said, she said, she said all last year she told you about what you could afford, what you couldn't afford. Meanwhile, she's sitting over there with a fake Rolex that don't work, fake Louis Vuitton luggage. And Lisa hasn't paid her taxes. I said, oh, she had all the tea. I don't know what background checks Jill ran, but Jill got all the motherfucking tea and was ready to spill it. And they're swole. And it's crazy. And did you see when she read uh, Heavenly's ass? She got Heavenly together. About that online degree and all that bullshit. And Heavenly went right get her. You, your mama, when she told her, when she said something to her, since she's dumb, she said, you're a dumb ass bitch. She did, so you're a dumbass bitch. Fuck you. And we're going to say your mama. I said, did you just say your mama? Bitch, did you just take us back 30 years, honey? Your mama? Really? I was watching Married to Medicine. For a minute, I got a flashback, and I thought I was watching motherfucking what's happening. Your mama. Kiss my ass. I said, oh, Raj, honey. I said, God, honey. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Jill got Heavenly's number. And then, let's just check it. When Jill said it, y'all look at Jill? Have y'all seen Jill? Like, really? Now, I'm and I'm asking y'all, have y'all really looked at motherfucking Jill? That bitch looks like money. I don't think she had no money problems. She looks like money. You know, there, and, and, and listen, there's a difference between... What you look like when you have $20 and what you look like when you was working to get your $20. And you can see it. If you're a person that watches The Real Housewives of Atlanta, I ain't even talking about plastic surgery or none of that shit. I'm just talking about just in general. You look at season one, you look at the motherfucker Nene and Candy and them. There's a whole different look, and it ain't all just about a glam squad. Jill looks like money. Jill looks like she's comfortable. She's comfortable. And, I mean, you know, we still get hiccups with Heavenly. Sometimes I'm off like a weave, be twisted, and shit like that. And there's a polish. When you see them in the confessionals, Jill ain't talking all over her husband and shit. That bitch is sitting over there. Not saying nothing. John was just talking. And I clocked it. I told my mother, I said, look at this bitch. She's sitting there. And we all know Jill got something to say. But she just sat there. When her husband was talking, she was quiet. She was talking over top of her husband. And carrying on. And I believe when her husband say shut it down, that bitch will shut it down. It's class. It's called class. And it's something that heavily don't got her and buddy. You know, you got a motherfucking husband that calls you buddy. Sean, my my brother Sean Bradley always points that out. Motherfucker calls her buddy. That is a fucking mess. Buddy? Buddy is like code word for some gay shit. I remember years ago, I have this one cousin that's gay. 
and uh, always like tried to pretend that he wasn't and all this and all his his guy friends was his buddy. I said, sucking him off, huh? Buddy. So that's what I, every time when Sean says something about that or I hear um, dang, uh, whatever his fucking name is referred to heavenly as buddy, I'd be like, mm, there they go. <laughs> Faggity bullshit. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. That motherfucking Jill looked like a fresh $20 bill and heavily can't take it. She really can't. And Toya, Toya ain't nobody's friend. And Toya literally got the shit started all over again on the beach because Toya's the one that pointed out that heavily didn't speak to Jill. She could have just left it alone. We already knew they were feuding. Just fuck it. She didn't say hi to her and fuck it. That's the end of it. But no, she'll say, you didn't even speak to her. Got the shit started all over again. Anyway, let me go ahead and start wrapping this up. So, then they did this whole thing about uh, we're going to swap husbands and, and uh, swap mates and, and then do this little exercise out at the bonfire that the night before. Child, Darren and Lisa are done. It's done. I mean, they may stay together for the kids. They may stay together for looks. Or that marriage is done. It's done. Lisa is just as unhappy. She's unhappy, and you can see it. It was so horrible, and I was like, I don't even know why she put herself out there. She looked so foolish to me. So foolish. You know, I don't know if you don't have trust in you don't have a marriage. Well, you didn't trust him when you started. You were still securing your future. You sold your soul to the devil, bitch. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Ain't no need to cry now. You sold your motherfucking soul for a good parking spot and a big church hat, bitch. Deal. Deal. But that marriage, that's a, a, just a farce. And then I'm looking at Darren. Then he goes into this whole speech about God made this woman for me. I said, uh, really? So now Darren been watching Tyler Perry movies. Because I swear he was quoting shit from um, Tyler Perry's movie Family Reunion. That God made this woman just for me. I said, child, if you get your faggoty ass on out of here and quit playing, get on. I'm just as sick of them. And I'm honest to goodness, I wouldn't care if they don't come back next season. I'm sure they'll get another season, um, the show. Because I'll definitely be watching. But Lisa, Nicole, and um, Screwboy... They ain't got to come back for me. I am sick of them. I'm sick of their dry-ass storyline and everything else. It's enough. It's enough. But anyway, that's basically it that went on. Um, yeah. It, you know. And Toya, was, again, Toya's just a fucking idiot. She's a goddamn idiot. Um, but, um. I think they're going to continue on with that, that bonfire shit and then some shit's going to jump off next week is what it looks like. So we're going to chill right here. We're going to thumbs up, thumbs down. How Y'all know how that works. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to let this go. I thank you guys for your patience with my videos coming out and the fact that it is out so late because it's literally Wednesday. Um, but y'all know, y'all understand what's going on. Um, and I got to do it as I can do it. Um, but I love you guys. I appreciate you um, for following me and supporting me and all of the love that you guys have given me. And like I said, being so patient. Um, and I will get these videos out to you as I can. Um, as long as this voice holds up, I'm going to keep on talking. And that's it. But definitely for Married to Medicine, I will see you guys next week. Because like I said, I think there's going to be some shit that goes on. That damn Mariah's going to get back up on her chariot and be throwing them damn tomatoes again next week. So I can't wait to see it. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. All right, guys. I will talk to you later. See you guys. Bye.